Hey guys, and welcome back to Basement Gamer, and welcome to our May PS Plus review. This month, Sony has given us two simulation games. They've given us City Skylines and Farming Simulator 2019. Um, right off the bat, just want to say I'm pretty excited about these two games. I definitely think they're two solid games um, compared to the typical give a really good game and give a a bad game but before we get into it if you guys like this video please be sure to leave a like on it if you haven't already subscribe to the channel do a lot of content like this um, especially every month I'm reviewing what Sony gives us for PlayStation Plus give it a grade it's arbitrary a lot of the times nobody doesn't matter but you can always let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. So the first thing that I want to preface this all with is I have played City Skylines before. You can see to the right that I do actually have a good bit of the DLC because I bought it when it was all bundled together for like $30 or something like that. Um, it's a fun game. Um, we'll get into it. I guess I can, I'll just continue my game and just kind of talk about it over the top because there's a lot of things that I want to dip into. Um, and then, because uh, I already kind of have a feel for this game, similar to how I did with Uncharted 4. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people seem to actually be pretty upset about the fact that we were given two simulation games. I mean, I can kind of understand getting two of the same uh, genre and being upset about that. But overall, I feel like these are two, again, solid games, especially for given the current time the current timing of these releases. Um, wow, you can see that my city is uh, doing doing bad. Everybody's sick. There's a lot of uh, housing issues. I haven't played in a while either, so I don't 100% remember what the hell I'm doing. Uh, but a lot of people were complaining and saying that uh, this is the worst month ever. Uh, PlayStation Plus is so expensive, uh, and if we're paying, remind you, $5 a month if you're paying full price, which is on you. Um, that's so expensive. So therefore they should be giving us two $60 games, I guess is what people are getting at. I don't really get that. Um, I mean, I think anything that they give is really just a bonus. Uh, really the, the true purpose of PlayStation Plus is to be able to play online. It's the online fee, if you will. Um, and to have like cloud saves. So the two games are bonus. If they give you two games that are worth 250 each, that would be them delivering on the value technically. They go above and beyond that. So I don't really think that's a fair argument. I don't think that's a really good argument. Beyond that, be getting mad because essentially it wasn't the two games that there, a rumor was started. And I think people got a little too excited and thought that we were actually going to be getting, I think it was Dark Souls and Dying Light. That would have been the best probably lineup ever. It was too good to be true. So if you actually believe that, I'm sorry, but like, you shouldn't have. That's really all I can say. Um, because again, they never delivered like that. It's a pretty common thing. We saw it. Shadow of the Colossus, good game with Sonic Forces. You know? Not, I don't think they moved a lot of copies, if you understand what I'm saying. But yeah, so I've played City Skylines before. It's a great city simulation game. So, you, uh, what's the name of this? Booby City. Uh, but yeah, I think I can pause, right? Yeah, so I'll pause everything for now and just kind of like go around. Um, I think I can zoom in. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I literally don't remember the controls. So basically, you start with just this right? And you have to build the city out from there. Going with a grid system seems to be the easiest way. My friend Cody showed me this game actually. And uh, he basically said set up a grid system. Most of the stuff you'll find online, people set it up as a grid system for the most part. You can get like some diagonals going and whatnot. But basically the idea is to grow your city. You have to have a balance between infrastructure and residential and businesses. Um, it's really cool. If you're into simulation games especially, you're going to love this game a lot. It's probably the best city building game that I've actually ever played. Um, it definitely captures you. Uh, it is easy to fall out of, but 
it's a simulation game. So um, it's one of those games that you probably pick up, you're like, oh my god, this is so much fun. You play it for two, three weeks straight, show me, right? Probably is how much I played it. Um, you put like f a good 40 hours into the city, and then you put it down for a while, because you're like, ah, I don't really know what else I want to do. And then you come back to it, and you're like, I don't remember what I was working on, so I'm just going to start a new city. And you com complete the vicious cycle over and over again. Um, I mean, it's like playing Sims. It's like playing The Sims, exactly. Yeah, it's a simulation game. That's exactly what it is. Instead of focusing on specific people, you're focusing on the city. Um, I, again, I have some of the DLC in installed, so I've got universities and stuff like that. They definitely add to the overall part of the game, but I think getting the base game for free um, kind of trumps that. Like, if I got the base game for free, I may never have gotten the DLC, but if I would have just bought the base game, I would have probably wanted to put a little bit more money into it to make it more worthwhile. I don't know if that makes sense. You've got everything you can think of when it comes to a city. You've got your roads. You've got your zoning. So you can kind of see, like, how the green is residential. Um, the light blue is... Uh, what is that? That is commercial is what it's called. Um, and then you've got like high density, low density, you've got your industrial areas that you want to set up. And again, it's all about trying to keep everything balanced, um, perfectly balanced as all things should be. You create stuff with your different industries, you send those off, uh, resources are created or they take the resources and they convert that into goods. And then those goods are exported and you have exports and imports and all that good stuff within your city, just like an actual city. You've got utilities that you have to worry about. So you have to worry about the electricity, you have to worry about the water, you have to worry about the sewage, all that kind of stuff. Um, you have to make sure there's healthcare, education, police officers, fire departments, all that stuff. So like there will be crime areas, there will be high crime, and then you put in a police station and the crime rate lowers. Um, you can set up transportation. So I think I have a couple of different like uh, trains and I have like an airport somewhere. Again, this is huge you start in just like a one block of this this is nine blocks all pieced together so it's become a little bit much for my small little brain um leisure so you can set up parks you can set up um like amusement parks uh zoos i think yeah so yeah areas you can see that i own the max um technically I think I started with this square right here. So technically I could have gone straight up. Um, you can see that like all the way around here, these are zones or areas that you could have gotten depending on how you built out your city. So this area could have been the top right of my overall city. And then this whole area would have made it up or contrary, I could have gone this way. Um, but yeah, you can really grow it out however you want based on the land that you see. Um, you can see like what kind of resources and stuff are there. You can control your economy so you can raise taxes, you can raise the budget for certain things and reduce the budget for others. Um, you can take out loans, which then you have to pay back. Um, and then you can see your like whole income expense report and stuff like that. And you can see where you're making money and where you're potentially losing money, um, where you could improve and like where there's room for you to make more. It's really, really neat. It's super in depth. It's a lot at first. Um, but once you kind of get the, the hang of it, um, it really does become quite easy and just super enjoyable. Um, you can really just shut your brain off and put two, three hours into it. You can control the speed. So you can see I'm in the year 2036. Um, you can control the speed at which it goes. So you can have it going like super fast. You can just run it for a little bit in the background while you're, while you're working on something. Um, it's like a super hands off at times and super hands on at other times. And you can kind of control how much you want to do that. Um, it's really, really neat. Uh, there's milestones. Uh, I believe I've reached the final milestone uh, for this city, uh, reaching 90,000, a population of 90,000. Um, but yeah, there's different rewards you get. And then these things can provide different um, like bonuses for your city. It's a really, really, really cool game. Um, and it's one of the best simulation games, I, like I said, I've ever played. Definitely one of the better city simulation games. Um, I was big into like Roller Coaster Tycoon and games like that for a long time. 
Um, SimCity, uh, this rivals that for sure. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this game, and it's actually a piece that I haven't touched too much, um, but I'm really excited to get into, are there's like challenges where it starts you off with um, kind of like a set of goals that you need to hit to like complete it, scenarios as they're called. So you can go in here and you can see these are specific again to um, the DLCs, but it was really cool that they added in these scenarios and you have losing and win conditions, similar to Roller Coaster Tycoon, or at least uh, I believe the Roller Coaster Tycoon I played. Um, so I found that really interesting. And then new map, there are so many maps that you can start on, even in just the base game. Um, I mean, all of these. Then you switch over to Snowfall, Natural Disasters. Each one adds about two or three, I think, DLC-wise. Um, but just really cool like to actually get onto... There's a whole nother DLC that I didn't realize they released. Um, but to actually try and play through all of these would take you a massive, massive amount of time. And then last but not least, the other cool thing is uh, the trophy list, for me at least, kind of acts as a objective or milestone type thing as well. So there's all kinds of different uh, goals for you to try and work towards, kind of gives you, because in the base game, it's really just about building it however you want, but maybe after a while you're kind of like, I don't know what I want to do, what I want to work towards. You can look at the trophy list and you can go through them and uh, kind of like work towards those objectives. Um, but yeah, you can get all kinds of different starting conditions. Um, you can see like what the natural resources are over on the right, um, how much area and room you have for building, which is obviously very important, especially early on. You want to make sure that you're able to kind of build out your areas, but you also want to make sure you're near water, all kinds of different things. It is a really, really neat game. I highly suggest you maybe watch a couple of other videos on it and really get a feel for it um, to kind of help you get started. Um, but once you get more hands on with it, it gets super, super easy. Um, you get so used to just how everything goes and you can take off and you can start jumping into for the longest time. I didn't even touch universities or most of like the, um, industry specific things that you can set up. But after a while you get to the point where you're like, okay, I understand the base of my city enough. I can jump onto these other things. You're good to go. Uh, so City Skylines, that's going to wrap it for that. It's a really good game, though. Uh, if, you were, if you were one of the people who was upset, I can't stress enough. This game is really good. I, I highly recommend you actually download it and just give it a try. If simulation games aren't for you, I understand. I would still say give it a try. I think it's different enough, um, and it can really show you uh, kind of like the cool side of simulation games. But with that being said, I didn't want to spend too much time on City Skylines because, again, have played that i am super excited to jump into farming simulator because this is a game that i've actually wanted to play for quite some time and just never felt like i should spend the money on it um i, I had been tempted during certain sales uh but playstation plus made the decision for me so we yet to become a farmer um it's a game like i said that i've wanted to try for quite some time so i'm actually excited to jump into it I'm just you oh look. my god. <gasps> you think that's us? Oh. Hey, boy. <gasps> Why is he so good looking? Mm. Mm. This smells like that.
so good. That, yeah, that was, that was really good looking. Oh my god. All right, so there's mods. That's interesting. Cool, 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 cool. Um, multiplayer. That's interesting because I think this is like very much like you kind of like control everything. You, know? you have to like get out there and do it. You know. Um. Wow. This is uh, this is very exciting. I can have up to ten save games. All right. Uh. Let's see. What? This is so cool. Okay, so three different career modes. You got new farmer, so you already own land and some equipment in Ravenport, Ravenport. We'll teach you how to play farming simulator. That might be where we start. Um, farm manager, you start with substantial funds, but no land, no buildings, and no equipment. It's up to you to decide what your farm will look like. That definitely sounds very interesting. Basically, like start as new farmer, get to there. Uh, start from scratch, your starting capital is very limited and you don't own any land or equipment yet. The economy is tough, prices are low, gameplay elements are on the most realistic setting. That sounds terrible, but fun. Like that sounds really hard, really challenging, brutal, but oh my god, I feel like that would be so rewarding if you actually get shit rolling. Uh, let's start as a new farmer though and learn how to, they, listen, they said Ravenport, Ravenport, whatever it is, but now they're giving me the option for Felsburn, Felsburn, and there's a castle. Okay, interesting. I couldn't change my character name, I'm a little bummed about that. So it's gonna lose a little points there. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Farming Simulator. Would you like to start a short guided tour? This will show you the basics of the game. I feel like we should do that. All right, follow the path to the big yellow harvester. My big yellow harvester. <laughs> In the lower left is your map and the flashing green ring indicates. Oh my God, this is like literally in first person. Oh no. Oh no, Shelby's gonna get sick. You can jump! On the fields you own from the very start, it's wheat has conveniently grown to a stage where it can be harvested time for you to enter the combine harvester and get started okay let's do it um oh oh god i just climbed up on it how do i enter vehicle square okay attach the harvester's header that's sitting right in front of it okay um, I can't see because of this damn light. Ah, I now have it attached. I understand. Now unfold the harvester and turn it on so the header starts rotating. You can hire workers. Um, alright. Lower. Turn it on. And we'll just go forward. Look at this. Oh my god. So far so good. Usually however you'll have a lot to do so it makes sense to hire helpers on your farm. Whenever a job can be executed by a helper it will be indicated in the top left panel. Hire a helper to take care of the rest of the field. So we will do that. We will hire... Oh. We will hire a worker. Okay, the helper will now take care of the job until they are done or the grain tank of the harvester is full. You can now take care of other business. Exit the harvester and walk to the next question mark. Symbol indicated on the map. Please don't hit me. Thank you. Alright. That is really cool. Alright, what are we doing here? Fields that have been harvested need to be cultivated before they can be sown anew. <laughs> uh, reap what you sow. This field has been harvested recently and now needs somebody to cultivate it. Enter the tractor and attach the cultivator. Looks like the cultivator... I'll back on up into it. Oh, that's cool. You don't have to be like super, super close, which is nice. All right. Oh, wait. 
We probably need two. And now we should be good. Right? Are we doing it? Oh yeah. I mean, what was that thing? Hello? What are you? Are you supposed to be on? Did we break our tractor already? Why do I know if I'm- oh my god, you can go like... Hella first person mode. I wanna see and make sure that like... Yeah, I wanna make sure I'm hitting everything. Alright, so I'm guessing... Good to hire a worker, right? Oh, you're supposed to lift it up, of course. Okay, but seriously, what are you? What are you and why did I break you? Oh my god. Oh my god. There is so much here. Do I own all this? Oh wait, we're just down here? This is a little loss? Okay, I think I broke the tutorial though, in all seriousness. And then what do I- I have to get that on somehow, no? I really need the next part of the tutorial to come up, so I know what I'm doing. Alright, now I got somebody working on this. They missed a whole row. That's on me. That's totally on me. I thought- I, mean, I messed around with this thing enough to know that it's not necessary, I think. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't really paying attention. Who's to say? Will Spencer ever find out how to properly farm? The game gave him all the tools, but he chose not to listen. Alright, finish that row. Good job. Good job. Just do a quick... Just make the turn. Okay. Let's switch to one of the other tractors. Okay, let's just hire a worker real quick. Yeah, they lowered it. I don't know how they did that. Okay, cool. So now we are... Fields that have been cultivated are ready to be sown. So now we need to sow. You can select your seed. Lower the tool. Alright, what seed? Do we want wheat? Do we want barley? Do we want oat? Do we want canola? Do we want soy? Do we want oil, seed radish? Do we want grass? Do we want wheat? Do we want barley? Oh. That's really cool that it doesn't, like, accidentally, like, use it when you're not in the area. Because that would be a pain in the ass. Alright, cool. Switch to the next... Let's hire our worker, and then let's switch to the next vehicle. As soon as the harvester's tank is full, or even before that, you can unload its contents into a trailer, hop on the tractor, and attach, a tra attach the trailer to it. Okay... So we can attach it, nice, and then we need to go next to the harvester. How's that? Is that, is that better? How do I know? We're out of it now. Oh, oh, I'm doing it. I did it. Go me. Where? Over to the next question. Is that really that all the way down there? Might be. We're going to give it a try. Seems to be fairly open. Um, a lot of stuff to do. Oh, and we can drive on actual roads and annoy people who are actually uh, on the road. Yeah, it looks like we're supposed to drive it all the way down there. Holy shit, this is going to take four fucking ever. That's awesome. Toggle cruise control. Oh. Looks like your vehicle can get, like, damaged. Very interesting. Very interesting to say the least. Is this where I have to turn? Ooh. It's gonna be a hard no. Oh, we made it. 
All right, well, Farming Simulator, definitely a slow-moving game, but nonetheless, very interesting. I'm definitely excited to jump more into this game um, and kind of see what all else it has. Um, this online station is one of the places on the map where you can sell your harvest. You can check the current prices of all products by opening the menu and going to the prices screen. Um, okay. Where do I see the price? Oh, prices, here we go. Oh, and like certain places are selling it for like more and stuff. Interesting, interesting. Selling your crops is the main way to earn money as a farmer. You don't say. All right, now it looks like we have a new place to drive to. Can we get in a different car? Oh. Can I enter this vehicle? Oh. All right, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. So overall, I again, I honestly think PlayStation delivered on these games. Um, are they perfect? No, but I would say this is probably one of the best two game lineups we've gotten in a while. Um, just again, based on the fact that normally what we're getting is like one solid game and one meh game. These are two fair to solid games in my opinion. Um, the only downfall that I would say is the fact that they're both simulation games. I would have liked to see a little bit of variety there, uh, but that's not going to really hurt it that much in my opinion. Um, I'm honestly willing to give this month a B uh, to like a B plus. They're simulation games, but I feel like that's perfect for the quarantine that we're all stuck in right now. Um, we all have a lot of time on our hands um, and this is kind of an easy way to kill it um, where you can just kick back and relax you know instead of playing the uh, like the shooters where they're really intense um, or just like online games with other like people where like sometimes communities can be toxic and whatnot uh, it's a good way to just again relax similar to how Animal Crossing took off I think um, that was really good timing same deal here two simulation games that I think most people can get behind. Um, Farming Simulator, pretty realistic it seems, or like it tries to be realistic I should say. Um, city Skylines is a really cool way to um, run a city. You can actually in city, city Skylines set up a farm area, name that farm area, switch over to Farming Simulator, name your farm that. It's like you're playing one in the other. I mean... <laughs> But that'll do it for this month's PlayStation Plus review. Please let me know down in the comments what you think. What grade would you give it? Uh, have you played either of these games? And are you excited that more people are going to get to play them? Like, I'm excited that more people are now going to get to play Cities. Um, I think it's a good game. Um, but yeah, if you've played them, let me know what you think uh, down in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, overall, I think this was a solid month. Um, Hopefully we see just it go up from here. Uh, we shall see. But yeah, that does it. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, leave a like on it. You can follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash thebasementgamer, G-A-M-R. Uh, maybe you'll see some Farming Simulator. Maybe you'll see some City Skylines there in the near future if that interests you. Next week, this, this day next week, it is going to be the final part of The Sims as far as it is in the PlayStation Plus weekly video thing. So that should be fun. That'll be next week. And then the following week, we will draw a new game. Uh, that's the other thing. I don't think either of these games are going to get thrown in there just because they're a little too much. Like you have to be really invested in them. There's a lot to do. I think we're going to hold off on these and maybe just keep these strictly to some streams and what have you. 
Um, you can also follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, same thing, at the Basement Gamer G-A-M-R. More than happy to talk to you guys over there. Just, yeah, reach out. Um, if there's anything you guys are hoping to see more of on this channel, don't hesitate to let me know. Love to hear the ideas, and I would love to try and deliver on those things. That does it. Long one. A lot of talking. I'll shut up. Go to sleep. Wash your hands. Stay inside. Flatten the curve. Much love. See you in the next video. Friend of Dragon. Maybe we'll farm in there. <laughs>